Are we going? Are we going? It's very I guess so. Yeah, it's very, very bright. bright. I'm having it holes in my vision from the light. <laughs> okay, now we're live. Hey, guys. Hello. 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 Hey. We're Happy. back. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Thursday. 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 Everyone's lost track of their ears. Hmm. Good way to get the uh, happiest hour started. Bit of our wonderful uh, applewood lemon cello there to start off with. Gets you in the mood, gets the juices, mm. gets the conversation started. Creative juices <laughs> flowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. ah, so, good. so, we're back in a quasi state of lockdown in Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, the happiest hour returns. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Again, yes, back for the they second tried, period. They tried to keep us down. Didn't work. No, the virus does, though. The virus does work. It transmits quite readily. I'm starting to wish I'd worn a black t shirt, though. Yeah, it yeah, stands out a little yeah. bit. Or I could just blend into the background. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure. So, today we're going to, um, the four of us, go through some of the more interesting Sauvignon Blancs that we have on the portfolio. Yep. Because yeah. I know, well, Dean, what would you say? What is our top selling wine by varietal? Oh, it's uh, Sauvignon Blanc a uh, long way. For sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 I suppose it's kind of what we started off as a company in, uh, 26 years ago now. Um, it was New Zealand wines, and of course, you know, Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc is... The wine they made in New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Made it all famous. Mm -hmm. But I think it's fair to say, I don't think people realize just how much... Uh, variety there is in uh, Sauvignon Blanc as well. Yeah, exactly. So today we're going to go through uh, five different examples of sort of not your typical New Zealand's Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc. So, yes. you know, to show that it is really quite uh, versatile and it's a grape that can make many, many, uh, many very different styles. So, so why don't you so just start off? So, so we're doing fine wines and four four cocktails. Four thirty on Thursday. <laughs> oh, now, uh, we've got our uh, Benetton cast here. We're, uh, we've got uh, someone from every part of the world. <laughs> yeah. So Different all drinking some of blondes. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. That's the whole philosophy. <laughs> so, yeah. So today we're going to start with something really kind of different and interesting. It's the Hunter's Offshoot um, Sauvignon Blanc, but it, <laughs> it's a Petillon Naturel. So meaning that it is a sparkling wine made in a sort of different style. They put it into the bottle before it's finished fermenting. And then uh, the yeast kind of finishes the job in there and produces carbon dioxide, which you can see from the crown cap gets locked inside. You can also see it, it's it's cloudy, but that's like a natural part of it because it's totally unfined, unfiltered. They're bottling it off as they uh, before the wine's even totally finished fermenting. So this is a great wine for what would you say? Summer. Summer. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> great wine for anything. Yeah, great wine for anything, but particularly Hong Kong summers where it's so hot and you know you want something bright, fruity, fizzy. This is a perfect wine. Ooh, nice fizz to it as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because obviously, my background's more on the spirit mm. side, so I'm, I'm slowly getting into the whole wine side now. So for me, it's, it's see a sparkling Sauvignon Blanc is quite unusual. Yeah, it is It is actually quite unusual. There's a few examples of it. And in uh, Marlboro, they make kind of more traditional, like Champagne method, sparkling Sauvignon Blanc as well. Really? Cool. Yeah, they've been trying to do that mostly because they were making too much of it, <laughs> and they, <laughs> they couldn't sell it all in one category. but. Yeah, but this is a different sort of interpretation of that, and it's more on the kind of really fun, bright, citrusy grapefruit. Yeah, it's what like. Uh, this is amazing. Yeah. Like citrusy uh, yeah, pear. Yeah, kind of pear, yep. white pear, grapefruit pith. Um, one of my clients, uh, Cami from Brew. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Shout great. out to her. She describes this as like a summer picnic with skittles oh yes oh. yeah 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 because you do it's it's a it's, it's interesting that's a great explanation because you, it's uh not that normal champagne bubble that you would like that you would expect it's it's yeah. more of an effervescence to it yeah so just something yeah. that's a bit lively on your palate mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's not like the super dense bubbles, but they're kind of larger and looser. But it has a nice foam on the palate. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so good. Lots of texture because, again, it's unfined and unfiltered, so you can really kind of feel the wine. Yeah. Nice, bright acidity. This is this is a wine you want to leave standing up in the fridge. Yeah, yeah definitely. When you when you put it in there, because you want you it, it's a bit hard to see in this, but it actually um, you, you want the settle the, the sediment to sort of go down to the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Don't shake the wine. Don't, don't shake, don't don't shake, shake the, the wine. No, no. Uh, this is probably not one <laughs> of those uh, you know? boat party party wines <laughs> where you're spraying it on something. But uh, so in terms of food, what would you match with this? Because obviously the, the acidity is quite high. Yeah. Like, I think you can do go a lot of different ways. Like traditionally Sauvignon Blanc, maybe they do more seafood, yeah, yeah, shellfish, shellfish kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. But like this would be good with Vincent, no food today. <laughs> what? No uh, food. You didn't get any food. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my fault. Oh, my fault. It's okay. We'll do. It. Don't worry. We got some fruits coming yeah. up later. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I think this would be good with like. I don't know, fried chicken, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Um, Actually, right. lot, fried chicken is amazing. a lot of fatty foods work yeah. really well. It's one of those things that the great thing about acidity is it works really well with fatty foods. Yeah. Yep. Um, the the acidity, oil. yeah, exactly, cuts through that. So even yeah. roast goose, something like that. Yeah. Any sort of yeah, roast, roast chicken, I was thinking, would yeah. be really tasty. Oh, mm -hmm. don't say too much. I'm hungry right now. Right? And, and oh. even, even, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Making decent salad. laughs> yeah. Um, like a roast chicken salad. Or yeah. Like too. It wouldn't have to be hot chicken. A summery chicken. salad with roast chicken. I think something kind Delicious. of herbaceous and like minty would also be yeah, really nice. Yeah, like, yeah. Good, a good contrast. Yeah, you mean. yeah. And pavlova. Mm. Australian pavlova, Australian pavlova. Probably not New Zealand pavlova. Pavlova's dessert, though, right? Yeah. Mm. Same thing in the UK. Yeah. Okay. With the mango, uh, with the mango ring. With the um, um, meringue. 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 That's yeah. what I was about. <laughs> yep. That one. There we go. Sorry. It's a tough one. Australian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Must have been that lemon shot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You haven't seen all the drinking we're doing behind the scenes leading up to this. We can't show that. Facebook has uh, <laughs> rules, content rules. It's not allowed. <laughs> it should be like a behind the scenes. Yeah, we can do it after. That's so good. I think one of the interesting things about this too is that it's actually made from made by a winery that is probably probably really the reason that everyone drinks Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was back in around 1984, uh, Hunter's Winery, which uh, produced this, uh, they were one of the first people to actually submit their wines into an international wine fair in, in the UK. Um, and that's when they came out just winning all the awards for their Sauvignon Blancs. And uh, some of the best writers, Janice Robinson in particular, and people like that, mm -hmm. got right behind it and went, this is amazing, this is something that we've never seen before. And it was from there that it actually, um, that, that uh, it, it really took off and grew. Um, so hunters are, are pretty much one of the reasons that we all drink Sauvignon Blanc. And I find it really interesting that they now make such a really different expression of it as well. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's partially due to the change in generational winemaking. Yeah. So yeah. now Jane Hunter is, uh, I think it's his, her nephew yeah, that's right. is in charge of winemaking. So he's doing something kind of, as they're, as they're calling it offshoot, an offshoot from the more traditional varietals and, and methods and uh, doing something a little more fun and playful. Mm. Yeah. They do another wine, another uh, pet nap. Uh, not a pet nap, but in that series. Yeah, they make a, uh, a Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's made in kind of like a lighter, brighter style, mm -hmm. but um, interestingly also has a very high percentage of whole cluster pressing. So it's a very kind of unique uh, and different mouthfeel, I think. Mm, yeah. Different take on the wine. Yep. I love I love these products, and, and this is what we're seeing with a lot of, especially established wineries that have been around for a long time mm -hmm. like this. Um, some of the new wines that they're coming out. Mm -hmm. There's lots. There's lots of interesting stuff for wine geeks. Yeah. 
but the other nice part about it is that I think you know nowadays you can just open that and just drink it and enjoy it it's just the the so easy drinking wines you don't have to wait 10 years for oh, it no, to, for sure. to mature yeah anything. this is meant to be something you drink right away and something fun and you know a party wine I guess summer party wine oh, yeah 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 it's I mean it, it's kind of geeky in a certain sense because it's something different and unique but it's totally approachable and totally fun yeah and I also just try this out. Uh, seems like it will be more on tropical fruits and also on some some kind of mangoes. That's what I've got in my mind. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm mango. thinking in my mind what would like food wise what would go well with this. Mm. So I'm thinking mango, yeah. some sort of chicken, and then some mango, mango yeah. chicken salad. Yeah, something like that. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Mango sticky rice. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 Eat some dessert today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the flavor will be comes from a warmer, warmer year. I don't know um, why. Because yeah. like also, we also just tried out the offshoot uh, Pinot Noir recently, and seems like very. Uh, oh, you mean the hunters? Yeah. Yeah. So 2019 was a much hotter year in Marlboro, and mm -hmm. I think that probably, you're right, has a an impact on the sort of ripeness yeah. character. The yeah. so when Sauvignon Blanc gets riper or you know Chardonnay also gets riper it goes into yeah. the more tropical fruit mm. kind of territory yeah. instead of the kind of more citrusy lemon thing. Yeah. Should we try the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Okay so this is going to be a really interesting contrast to yeah. the normal. Yeah so we wanted to, to sort of highlight the different contrasts and next we have up the Harvest Sauvignon Blanc <laughs> so from funny. Adelaide Hills in Australia. And Harvest is a really interesting project. Maybe you can yeah. tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, Harvest is a great project. It's um, it's Adelaide Hills Winery, but this is one of the only working uh, wine co-ops uh, co or cooperatives mm -hmm. in Australia. So essentially what happens with, uh, with it is that uh, and how this started, there's local growers around the winery, they would invite them within about a five kilometer radius, I think. Um, they'd invite them if they had grapes that uh, were left over or maybe a contract didn't take all of the grapes. That um, instead of selling them off for juice and things where they get really no money at all yeah. for it, um, they said, look, um, Brendan and Laura, they are, are from Adelaide Hills from Unico Zello Winery, um, they said, look, bring them into us, we'll turn it into wine, then we'll bottle it and, and market it and sell yeah. it out there. And then what they do is that they give 50% of the profits directly back to the growers, mm. and the other 50% goes into a holding fund where the growers and that can make interest-free loans uh, oh, wow. oh, really? uh, from it. So oh, it cool. could be if they need a new tractor or they're, yeah. they're, they're going to you know, fix up something in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. and I, I can't remember the figure now, but I, I know it was quite a large figure um, that was actually loaned back to the farmers in there. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy to say 50% of the profits, but what it actually means to the farmers in real dollar terms yeah, it's is very it's, it's, it's huge. They were normally getting, you know, between one to $2,000 a ton, and they're now getting, in this method, they're actually getting about three to four thousand yeah. dollars a ton. Yeah. So it, it's it's quite a significant. Yeah, now that's a, that's a problem all across the wine industry. You know, we hear about this quite frequently, especially with some sort of larger scale operations that the growers for you know for these grapes don't receive a large enough portion of the the value from the wine. Really, you know, they're on the lowest rung of the value chain, unfortunately. Yeah. So they, they're getting, you know, peanuts yes. compared to yeah. what the final marketing cost is or price would be. Yeah. Should we try this? Yeah, absolutely. So Adelaide Hills, would you say that's probably Australia's preeminent Sauvignon Blanc subregion? I'd say it probably is. Um, it's just got that nice sort of, um, it's not exactly coastal, but it, it gets mm -hmm. into, um, 
it's very hard to distinguish uh, McLaren Vale from Adelaide Hills in yeah. some areas. So you get you get really nice warm days, but then you often really get the the cooler breezes coming in at night, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which helps to keep the keep it from going overripe. Mm -hmm. um, and as as with a lot of things like Riesling is another one where you can get Riesling from many different places in the world. Yeah. And I think it's perfectly okay to like them because they're all very different to each other. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think yeah. I would compare this to a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I think it yeah. sits in its own fair Yeah, it really does. Very different in style, actually. Mm -hmm. So on the nose, this is more, again, probably more towards the tropical fruit, would yeah. you say? Yeah. So maybe some of that mango, mango. melon. Yeah. yeah. And the acidity is not quite as bright in this too, so yeah. it's a bit more balanced. It's more like, for me, like, it's like a smashable wine, something you can just drink. Yeah, well. it's definitely a sessionable wine. It's not smashable. Uh, you can't tell it's smashable. No, it's smashable. <laughs> it's all about the smashable. It's all smashable. That's <laughs> so good. Um, mm. Yeah, on the palate too, It. I don't know whether because I recently ate a lot of pineapples, that it's just reminding me of pineapple so much. Mm. Mm. But How much pineapples have you been eating? I, I eat a bunch of pineapples. <laughs> yeah. That's a happy night. Yeah, yeah, a dozen pineapples. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's still, nice, sorry. So, no, go ahead. It's got a nice finish to it as well. It's quite, mm. quite long. Yeah. It's interesting, one of the other unexpected benefits of um, the cooperative was that uh, the initially it would be the grapes that they couldn't sell or the ones that got rejected but because the growers are actually getting more money by putting the grapes into this project mm. the the quality of the grapes has been sort of like why am I selling my best grapes for nothing oh, exactly. yeah. when yeah. I can get more money for them mm. so the uh, quality of these wines, which are really in a super reasonable price point, um, uh, it just it's just getting better and better yeah. every year. I think. No, I think they really have stepped it up every year. You know, just um, in terms of not only the you know the quality of the wine, but they're stepping up the production capacity as well, yeah. which is really impressive to keep the quality rising and the volume rising is very difficult. And, and Laura is an incredible winemaker too. Mm -hmm. the, the talent is, um, and and the the rest of the team that they've got there, they're very young, but they're just doing incredible things. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can't get enough of their wines. We really yeah. can't. Yeah. <laughs> right. We sell out of it every time. So yeah, because as soon as it comes in, we're like, oh, more wine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's yeah. Gone. yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's popular. There's a. Uh, Amir's got a whole host of them on his desk. At the yeah. Moment, so. <laughs> There's actually, I should point out too that the, the, in the same series, if you're interested in exploring it more, you can check it out on our website. But they also have a, a sparkling Blanc de Blanc, which is only a fraction more expensive, but uh, super, super good. Yeah. Um, really nice and dry. Uh, and fair cream on pilot as well. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, I agree. Um, I, thank, I thank you by the beach last weekend. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I think it's your <laughs> five year <laughs> anniversary, right? Oh, uh, yes. uh, Vincent uh, knows too yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just stopping him on Facebook. <laughs> Um, uh, and and uh, in stock at the moment, we also have uh, a little bit of uh, Syrah or Shiraz, if you like, uh, that's left over. Um, we will quite soon be getting in a Pinot, uh, Pinot Gris, mm -hmm. which is also one of my favorites that they make in the range. Yeah, that's a super drinkable, yeah. delectable, uh, smashable wine. <laughs> smashable <laughs> wine. That um, was very popular. Yeah. And uh, I know later this year too they'll also be releasing a Chardonnay and a Pinot Noir wow. as well too. Mm -hmm. So and they do some really cool th things. I think you agree that um, even though they're more common regular varietals for, yeah. for Australia, they handle them in sort of a, a fresher, newer way. I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, like fresh, fresh. Not not too much oak. On most of the reds, so very easy to drink. Mm. Should we move on to numero trois? 
Mm-hmm. So this is something very special indeed. This is the Klein Constantia Pascal Jolivier uh, collaboration wine from South Africa. Uh, so this is from the Constantia DO, which is right beside Cape Town. And it's a really special project. Uh, as I said, a collaboration between the famous Sancerre winemaker, Pascal Jolivier, or famous Sancerre brand, Pascal Jolivier, and the Klein Constantia. So they're really trying to do a sort of minimal intervention, um, really sight expressive version of Sauvignon Blanc. Um, Klein Constantia is probably one of the best Sauvignon Blanc producers in South Africa. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And they, um, so this project has become a yearly kind of collaboration where you know, they're releasing it year on year and, and sort of trying to find their foot. But it is a very different expression than I think the other Sauvignon yeah, Blancs exactly. that Klein is making. Yeah, I think they make about three other uh, mm-hmm. Sauvignon Blancs, but this is quite unique. It's yeah, so this is chosen from the sites uh, with the highest elevation and the um, steepest grade, I guess you could say. So they're, they're really looking for specific sites to get this kind of like Sancerre-like expression, which is very minerally, mm-hmm. very kind of um, angular or lean. Um, but it has a very interesting sort of very kind of flinty nose, the mineral nose going on, yeah. and along with kind of more towards that citrus side, like it would be kind of lemon and a little bit of grass or yeah. grassy quality to it. No, I agree. Yeah. Maybe slightly reductive. So uh, all of these wines that we've gone through so far don't have any oak, which is another interesting kind of mm. Tying together factor. Um, what do you mean by reductive? Reductive means that uh, the fermentation happened in an oxic environment, like there's not quite enough oxygen for the yeast, so that it pr- provides this kind of slightly flinty kind of mineral character to oh, the okay. nose. And I think that's sometimes when people talk about a wine, especially a white wine that has a mineral thing, or like a kind of smoky yeah. element, that's what they're talking about. Yeah, we knew that. So, yeah, so, yeah so, we, we so knew that. So we're really glad you asked. It's that's all interesting. Like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah, yeah. So cool. And yeah. like different yeasts can produce it, and I mean, I don't know all of this stuff really, but... Um, but I'm not a white person, so I know what I like to drink, but I don't know much about how it's made, so... Again, it's it's um, quite different to the that New Zealand that that Marlborough for sure yeah, um, yeah. Because, yeah. because you don't have that the sort of cask and notes so much and um, and again the the higher acidity that you often associate yeah with New Zealand something more. There is that touch of kind of like a green note, but it uh, it really blends into the kind of citrusy minerally thing that we were talking about. And on the palate, this is a really nice wine. This is I've always I've always said because um, whilst a lot of New World wines were originally started by Europeans, mm-hmm. uh, wineries, um, I, I've always thought that uh, South Africa, if, if you're not if you're not comfortable with New World wines and, and you're used to drinking more European styles. Mm. I think somewhere like South Africa is a great place to explore because you do tend to get with their mm. with their winemaking style. Um, you tend to get that um, uh, nice movement, I think, from uh, from a European style and from more New World style. Yeah, it is. It is kind of. I guess they like to position themselves as in between the two you know, new world and old world kind of uh, pillars. But it, it really does kind of fit into that. Like it's a bit more, I, I guess you could say, focused and restrained and not so much just full on hit you yeah. head fruit and boldness. But yeah. And that's 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 definitely I mean this and this is this is taking it to another level. This is 
you know, an, a deliberate attempt to make a, a, a European style mm -hmm. wine in, in South Africa. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they've really, they've really nailed it. No, the so. winemaker is, is incredibly good. He's only young. Yeah, yeah, he's. I think he's only probably thirty this year. Or yeah, like that. Wow, very yeah. young. Yeah. Yeah. When when the, when they took over the winery, when they bought the winery, the the current winemaker at that time left, uh, and so they really invested in this in this young guy. And, the, mm -hmm. and through um, the French wineries, they sort of helped to nurture him uh, through through the way because they could see the talent in him, and I think that's. Evident. Yeah, no, it's very clear, actually. Definitely clear. And I, if you get a chance to try any of the other ones, of course, they're most famous for the Ben de Constance, which is a mm. natural sweet wine. Yep. And truly incredible experience. If you, I know a lot of people nowadays probably hesitant to try sweet wines, but this is yeah, like yeah. a must try milestone for anyone who's interested in wine for sure. We were actually at uh, Ahan for lunch yesterday and we tried the 2015, which is, uh, we had a sample bottle of it. And mm. um, and it's, uh, I think it's on its way over to us now. Okay. So mm. the next vintage on that, yeah. it's, it's quite exceptional. Well, I'm looking forward to that. They, um, they I, I was lucky enough to get a chance to visit the winery a couple years ago and it's really, Unbelievable! They've spared no expense and put yeah. absolutely every effort into making all of these wines. So the quality level really shines through in that. You can you can really see it. Yeah, and also actually the Sauvignon Blanc of Chine Constantia just recently got the National Challenge Award, just like the Bold Platinum okay. in the in the award. Just oh wow. just oh, recently. Where right. else was that? Yeah, just that they, in, uh, they said yesterday in uh, Instagram, so that's why you you oh, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. So I I pink screen already, so that's why yeah. Right. Well, we'll, okay. we'll be sure to post that up on the website in the coming days. Mm -hmm. Cool. Should we try the next one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tofu. Awesome. So now we're going on to go back to something a bit <laughs> different. Back to New Zealand, but. Um, this is also from Marlborough, but it's an oak style of Chardonnay. Uh -huh. So it's, it's something a little bit different. I know most people probably haven't had um, this type of very, you know, uh, concentrated, slightly, you know, different palate texture than uh, the normal stainless steel fermented ones. So. Yeah, you can see it straight away. Can't yeah, the color is yeah, quite a little different. different. Against my shirt, you just have to trust me. <laughs> yeah, doesn't shine yeah. against the black very well. Uh, mm. So Tohu is a really interesting project. Wow, um, wow. So that's, that's huge. Fun. Yeah, that's <laughs> this is the Mugwi Reserve, um, and it's from the Awatari Valley, which is the sort of lesser known of the three Marlboro Valleys, um, higher altitude. Mm bigger diurnal shift, so temperature difference between day and night. It's quite bright and sunny during the day, but very cool at night. Yeah. Cool. And actually, ordinarily, you can see, you can taste a big difference. It's um, recently, uh, well, when I say recently, in, in the last couple of years, New Zealand did a bit of um, some master classes that I was fortunate enough to go to in Hong Kong, and um, they were actually showing the, the Wines of terroir, if you like. We don't in New World. We don't talk about terroir that no, much. Not very often. But you could really see the difference. Um, they, would, they would have them from the different valleys. So they're all Marlborough Sauvignon Blancs. Mm -hmm. It's such different characters just from yeah. the the different plant, uh, plantings. Yeah, I think I think we've seen that. And most of Tohu's wines come from Awatari. Um, the other interesting thing about Tohu that we were talking about earlier is that they're the first. Uh, Maori owned winery yeah. in New Zealand, which yeah. is something very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really stands apart. They're, so they have a incredible commitment to maintaining the land and you know practicing sustainable agriculture, which we all know now is incredibly important. I really like this. So so like different to the last few we tried. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's very very different. So it's so oaky as well. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know why, but it's got like a kind of like. When I drink it, I kind of feel like I want to be, like, eat some fish with it. 
So salted fish? fish yeah, oh, yeah. So salted fish, yeah. No, it's got a like smokiness to it as well. Yeah, it definitely has a bit of a smokiness to it. So they, they ferment it with indigenous yeast in old uh, oak barrels. So I think it has more of that kind of oxygen interplay and gets a bit of that smokiness from that. And then they, it is uh, aged in in um, a portion of new barrels and second fill barrels uh, for 10 months. So it has quite a bit of oak for a Sauvignon Blanc, for sure. Yeah, it's a huge amount of oak. Yeah. But it really gives gives to it um, texturally. Yeah. Um, it, it, it doesn't really have that creaminess that a lot of people associate with, uh, like a, an oak chardonnay. Yeah. Um, it's probably more in the flavors. Yeah. And they're like you were saying, that yeast and brioche notes and um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the smoky note in there as well. It's really yeah. good. It still has a lot of bright citrus happening, like the acid level is quite high. So it feels fresh on the palate, but it has a nice, yeah, textural quality, a nice roundness to it. It's super clean. Yeah, yeah and also, I think it's dishes, also really best nice. can pair with some white sauce dishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just mm -hmm. like fish, warm, warm dishes, I mean, yeah. Yeah. With white sauce, yeah, that is pretty nice. I think, yeah, seafood would be great, like any sort of shellfish or any, yeah, white sauce seafood dish. The finish is so long, it's still yeah, going on. Uh, yeah. Like this is like citrus yep. pop in your mouth. Like um, I want to say grapefruit again or something, some sort of mm. pithy citrus that just keeps going and going. Passion fruit? Passion yep. fruit too, yeah. yeah. It's got, it's got, it's, 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 it's super complex. Yeah. yeah. It's so I can feel the that. vanilla on the pilot as well. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah that's a good yeah. point. I was thinking when you were saying about baked white, I, I was, it just popped in my head like, uh, anything Maybe. like a baked cheese or something yeah. like that, like a cheesy rice yeah. or a, like a yeah. Portuguese style. Baked, baked goat cheese would be Ooh. tasty with this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some, uh, yeah. Filo pastry things with baked goat cheese. Oh. I think I might have to go on and make something. I was about to say, we're just actually getting out this evening's menu. The lineup. Roasted yeah. chicken with filo, yeah. goat cheese, <laughs> squares. Mango, mango salad. Mango salad, mango <laughs> chips. Yeah. Uh, who are we kidding? We'll probably just get a shady burger or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably. Eat the leftover pizza in my fridge. Yeah. 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 Oh, come on, leftover pizza. <laughs> I did a good job yesterday. I didn't finish both pizzas that I ordered. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's just that's hard, hard to do. Uh, that's <laughs> hard to leave that left no, I left pizza. It, I left it for my wife, but I know she doesn't really like pizza that much, so it's okay. You did? <laughs> <laughs> especially, especially the one that you ordered. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one is something that I don't think I've ever actually tried before. This has been on the list for a while, but um, not very many opportunities. Because it is a dessert wine. And yeah. I, I, we don't often get a chance to break these out and try them. So this is the 2011 Late Harvest Sauvignon Blanc um, wow. from Gießen, also in Marlboro, but a, a different valley. Uh, this is a lower altitude. Whoa, look at that color. Oh, oh man. Whoa. So what, they just forgot to harvest this? or? <laughs> I, they, they purposefully left it to hang on the vines. So in um, in Bordeaux, some of the most famous sweet wines in the world are made from a blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. Yeah. And so they've tried to recreate some of those conditions where they're letting the grapes uh, get a type of fungus called noble rot or botrytis. Yep. So it really concentrates the grapes and makes them, you know, concentrate the sugar in there. And it, you can see, I mean, partially the color's from that and partially it's from from some age. Does this have a lot of botrytis in it? Yeah, it does. So they, yes. they were purposefully trying to encourage the botrytis to happen. And then they left it to hang on the vines as long as they could. So from the tasting notes here, they're saying up to an extra month after the others were picked. So you're getting really super concentrated um, hang time with that. 
And yeah, 2011. Oh, 2011 too. Yeah, oh, that's wow. amazing. Yeah, so it has a few years of age, nine years of age going on it now. So that's, you know, I think this is the perfect time to be drinking this. I was just about to say it's balanced really nicely now because the acidity is really yeah. at a level. You um, be perfect for drinking, drinking now. This is the first time for me to try a uh, dessert wine made by Sophia Brown, and that is so delicious actually. Mm -hmm. I can, I can feel so much power of the raisin. Of yeah, the raisin. Raisin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's still kind of interestingly enough does have like a slightly grassy thing going on, which I get or passion fruit as well. So you can get some of that varietal character from it, but yeah, it's an intensely colored and... But it has a nice balance, it's not overly sweet. I find yeah. sometimes yeah. like dessert wine is coming a bit too thick because of the sugar content. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm trying to ask. The acidity is still there because it, it finishes quite dry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's not cloying. And it's only 9% alcohol too. Yeah, it's only 9% alcohol. So the the residual sugar is pretty high. I mean, it's 280 grams per liter. Oh, wow. wow. Oh. Which is, which is <laughs> pretty high. You, you don't notice it. it. No, you don't notice it at all because the, the acid level is actually quite quite high as well. And the pH is low. So, you know, it feels really bright and fresh, mm. yeah. even though it is pretty concentrated and sweet. Yeah, but really tasty. The, the pairing for this, what would you pair it with? What do you think? What would you want to eat with this? Any kind of desserts, just like cream, just like vanilla, vanilla ice cream. Yeah. I think you can mm -hmm. even pour some onto the vanilla ice cream. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's the thickness of the of the dessert wine definitely gives some more flavor onto vanilla. So. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and this is fermented all in in barrels and aged in barrels, oh, primarily older barrels. So it has a lot of oxygen interplay that gives it that kind of color. But yeah, I, I would say foie gras. You gotta go with foie gras on this. Yeah. That's <laughs> the classic. Is wine? Oh man, for sure. That's the classic pairing in, really? in Bordeaux is like our in yeah. France. This kind of like really fatty rich. Really gras. fatty rich it's with sweet dessert wines kind of that's stuff. That's the best under it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It's great for a first getting the fatty food. stuff down, yeah. not so much on the rich. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing, another one too, as my, my wife likes to point out, makes a great aperitif. Um, and uh, with the acidity in that sort of gets you, gets you going, it's actually a great welcome drink. Yeah, it will definitely get you going. The sugar high will yeah. Oh, yeah. put you in <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, uh, yeah. Okay, sit down. Yeah. Yeah. No, sit. Yeah, it's a great one to get your guests either feeling less full after a wonderful meal, maybe, yeah. or uh, to get them started. Wow. So that's a good conversation. You said you've got pizza left in your fridge. What have you got left in yours in you? <laughs> Nosh meals. <laughs> Nosh meals. Yeah. Partially <laughs> yeah. 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 It's two, yeah. From two weeks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two days. <laughs> two days is okay. What's left over in your fridge? Fried noodles, but already treated today morning. <laughs> oh, already gone this morning. <laughs> so no leftover. I think I've got uh, actually got uh, quite a lot in our fridge for a change. Um, uh, but um, I think, although I'm pretty sure it's probably disappeared at lunchtime today, uh, there was some biryani, Ooh. some lamb biryani, and some dal makhani in there as well too. That's a tough I think, one. I think my fridge is made for alcohol. I have like two yeah. shelves of wine and food, <laughs> and then like a small amount of food. <laughs> well, there you go. What about what about a cocktail with any of these? Yeah. Any suggestions, or you want to experiment or with something? We, or are we going to embarrass you now? No, no, that's cool. <laughs> I really like this one, the offshoot. I think this one, if you want to make something really simple, you can do like a spritz with this one. Well, yeah, yeah. Such a here in there. Or some fresh passion fruit in there. Mm. You want to make it? Let's try. We got all the yeah. spoons behind us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We probably don't have the soda. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. The only thing we seem to run out of in, in this place is the mixers. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have no problem with anything else. 
Um, but the dessert wines, like the, the, um, the sweet ones, must, must go well with. Yeah, I think if you, if you wanted to do like a whiskey based cocktail, and if you wanted to replace the sugar content Ooh, with old fashioned with dessert that, wine. Uh, oh, yeah. Drop of, drop of some bitters or something, yeah. that'd be pretty good. Yeah. It's trying to whiskey. the whiskey and then. Uh, oh, yeah. Whiskey. Ah, there you go. Uh, Good old Irish whiskey. And so. Can't beat it. Ancient Chinese secret bitters. <laughs> oh, all the way from oh. Canada, Toronto, Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Had to go to Toronto to get uh, Chinese bitters. Yeah. yeah. This is an experiment. <laughs> we were talking today about. Um, I saw a post on Facebook that was. I think it was. Billion, but I'm not sure. Three, let, let's say three million, make it a bit more reasonable. If you were offered three million dollars, but you'd have to grill up, give up drinking alcohol for the rest of your life, would you take the three million? Three million's a bit low, but yeah. you take <laughs> three million. No, no. 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 Yeah. <laughs> give up alcohol for three million? I don't know. I don't think I could do it. In fact, if my wife's watching this, she knows I definitely can't do it. So, oh, here we go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it smells great. I don't know why I sound surprised. You always make great drinks. Yeah, I know, and they're always great. But <laughs> it's, it's got that honeyed note, but, you know, the, the kind of spicy... What am I, what am I smelling there? <laughs> yeah, the whiskey balances out. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. So there you go. Well, for on the spot, that yeah. was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> cheers to you for that one. Mm, that was really good. So see, cocktail is not so difficult to make if you have a sense. <laughs> yeah, if you know what you're doing. You need someone who knows yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, I've had some of your cocktails at the Christmas parties, and they're not. That good. Of course. <laughs> 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 That's been a Yeah. Oh, not no. the other. It's a Christmas tradition no. to make Vincent God drink absent. You know, uh, every yeah. year I'm, I was treated by a shot of absent. So, um, <laughs> I'm surprised you weren't treated by the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. usually, it's usually this bottle. Here <laughs> you go. There we go. The 85% apples. Think of these. <laughs> this is fine. You say that? Secret Yeah, the color looks like the Ninja Turtles. Yes, I thought it totally was. <laughs> 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 exactly. um, actually, while we're on uh, cocktails, we've got here too, with uh, Amir's specially curated some cocktails for us. Um, mm. And uh, if you haven't seen these already, they're on our website uh, that you can go to and, and check them out. They're available for sale. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about them? Yes, yeah, so we'll start off with, should we start off light and work our way up? Sure. <laughs> okay, let's start off with, but some of these need mixes. No, that's all. Oh, we're going to talk about them. No, we don't oh. need to open them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just, just talk about them. Tell, tell yeah. the people yeah. so what they're at. What they're we, we have, we have <laughs> uh, four different variations on the pre batch cocktails. So the idea is you can just open it, and two of them require either the soda, or if you want to get a bit, a bit more fancy, you can add some Blanc de Blanc in there, or some sort of fizz. So the first one we have is a... Actually, this one would work really well with that. Yeah, it would yeah. be pretty so, tropical. So the first one is a pandan and lychee collins. So this is a lemongrass and ginger gin, which has been infused with pandan. And then it also has some hibiscus in there, hibiscus uh, tea, which is a nice color, and then just some lychee liqueur. So all you do is pour it into your glass, ice, and then top with soda. Yeah, the color might be missing a little bit on the feed, I'm not sure, but it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's really yeah. hard, yeah. sort of like a real sort of cross sort of rosemary yeah. and, uh, sorry, rose and tea. Yeah, from the really really hibiscus, good. right? But yeah. But we did like a taste test, then we went through a mm. few different batches for these cocktails. So, yeah, you guys tried all four, haven't you? I yeah. buy one set already. Normally? Mm. With the whole set? I buy the whole set already. Oh, nice. Did you share them? No. I share with my friends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the next yeah. one is like a variation on a, a spritz. So this one uses like a midnight, which is our Australian 
vermouth. Oh, that's it's the tonic good. wine. So the, the tonic wine itself had some finger lime and green tea. So to match with that, it has some fresh strawberries, uh, watermelon liqueur, and then um, yuzu as well, some yuzu oil. Mm. So the whole thing, like, all the strawberries is infused into the vermouth for two days, and then we just filter it. And that's it. Mm. And it also has some fresh basil in there as well, just to dry up. So it's not too sweet. How have you served that one? So for this one, I just uh, top it off with soda and a little bit of oh, okay. a little bit of prosecco or champagne for maybe a bit more fancier. Mm-hmm. So yeah, spritz style. So get a nice, a nice big glass, loads of ice, and then for garnish, just put anything, anything you like. And cucumber. Uh, sorry. Oh, what? Sorry. Yeah, so some cucumber, some mint, some fresh strawberries, anything you want. Or oh, add some drops of acidic uh, things just like a uh, lime. Juice, yeah, so yeah. <coughs> all, all, all four cocktails already have like citric acid in there, so mm-hmm. you don't even, there's no need to add uh, citrus because they're well balanced already. Oh. But you can add if you want to. Mix it. Yeah. And yeah. also the acidic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, make, don't mess with perfection. <laughs> and how many drinks in there? Because they're 300 ml bottles, but yeah. Some... And so there's there's four cocktails in each one. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. excellent. Yeah, so if you're having friends over. Two yeah, cocktails each. Two hundred dollars a bottle. Yep. Yeah. Four cocktails. Good pricing, I think. Very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah what's yeah. the ABV on? So, so they all vary. So the spritz one is like sixteen percent. Okay. So all the bottles have uh, the ABV on the side. So if you are trying to have a low alcohol day, then the alcohol content's on the side. It also has. Uh, and it does when you when you um, when you put your soda and that it dilutes it. Sure. Yeah, even more. Yeah. As well too, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, what's the next one? Next one is the old fashioned. No, oh, that's that's really uh, tasty. It's really good. So this one uses uh, Irish whiskey, the Pogues. This one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one. <laughs> and it's been it's been infused oh, with <laughs> it's been infused with beeswax. So the beeswax gives you a nice texture. Mm-hmm. So it gives you a nice um, like creamy mouthfeel when you drink yep. the cocktail. Mm-hmm. And then it also has honey, uh, pear liqueur, and then bitters as well. Mm. So it's really tasty. Yeah, this one's a lot more approachable for me as as an old fashioned. Yeah. Not more. Um, it's not quite so heavy on the alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it has a nice balance of the whiskey and the flavour as well. Yeah, yeah. I find a lot of the pre batch cocktails that you buy are quite simple in terms of what they are. It's just like old fashioned Negroni mm-hmm. and Martini. So the idea is to do something a bit more approachable for, for all four cocktails. And we were talking about this on the weekend. Is that I I used to sort of avoid cocktails that I, I thought were too fruity and yeah. things like that too. But um, when they're actually when they're balanced, it, it's it's not a big fruit bomb. Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. just subtle flavors. Yeah, you just get the little hints mm-hmm. and they become really nice and complex and um, more subtle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the, and then the last one <coughs> is a variation on my type. So this one uses uh, coconut rum, so uh, Dead Man's Fingers, it's part of our range, which you can buy on wine and things. There we go. There so is so easy. There's a bottle I prepared earlier. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, we also have different variations, so we have the coffee, which is amazing, and oh, the spice. Right. <laughs> there we go. We're showing these off a little bit because these are only quite new. Uh, we bring them in bring them in from the UK and they've got, uh, that's the coffee flavored one and that's spice. the regular spice from mm-hmm. perfect for just uh, like with the, with coke or yeah, ginger you know, ale, just, or, ginger ale yeah. or something along those lines. Just directly add the coke and give you the flavor? Yeah, because, because it's already got all the spicing in there. I mean, uh, it, it takes that rum and coke just to another level. I'm probably mm-hmm. with you. I'd probably do a ginger, yeah. uh, a, a dry ginger style in there. So the, it's quite nice. You've, you've got almost a cocktail by itself, mm. just there with a simple addition. Yeah. yeah. All right. What was the cocktail we had in Pontiac? Was that old fashioned with the coffee or spice? The spice from yeah. the old fashioned. Yeah. yeah, that was good. That was really good. Yeah. So yeah. So the this one, this one was in the mojito. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't try that one. Yeah, the mojito was really good and really refreshing. Shout so, out to the Pontiac guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, so the last pre-batch is a variation on a Mai Tai. So this one uses the Dead Man's Fingers coconut, touch of uh, banana liqueur, some uh, vanilla cordial, and then 
it's rested for two days with uh, jasmine green tea. Mm. So you can see by the colour. So you get nice tannins from the tea, it just balances out that sweetness. So yeah, for this one you just pour over ice, add a squeeze of lime, or some pineapple, or anything really, anything very garnished. Mm-hmm. That's it. All super simple, easy approachable, smashable. <laughs> very tasty. <laughs> And don't forget, if you, if you need any tips on your cocktail making or that little secret ingredient you want for your next cocktail party, just drop us a, a line on our Facebook page and uh, yeah, Amir will get back to you. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yep, drinks by Amir. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> or, or if you buy a pre batch, my, my Instagram's on there with uh, the wine and things as well, so you can get in touch with both of them. Yep. If you have any questions or any suggestions that you need for your drinks. Yeah, you recently saw yeah, so saw one of our customers just taking you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you know them? Of course, my customer. Oh, which one? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> nice. Mm. Maybe he set him set you up. Yeah. yeah. Send him a question. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's it. Yeah. So that's some amazing drinks today. Man. Some fantastic ones. Great yeah. selection. Wow, uh, so thanks for everyone uh, for watching, and thanks to you guys for thanks joining for, us. Thanks for having us. We've got nothing else to do. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> you might see <laughs> us doing this a lot yep. in the next couple of weeks. We're yeah. thinking of maybe changing our work hours around so we yeah. uh, have dinner at 9 a.m. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> come out for it. So you might see us drunk in the afternoon, but yeah. can, be sure that we've worked all night. <laughs> yeah, we'll have your orders all processed yeah. before, before next day. Yeah, so <laughs> start with at 9 p.m., finish at 5 a.m., yeah. still 9 to 5. Yeah. Yeah. Still 9 to 5. Yeah. Just not taking the bus at peak hours anymore. Yeah. That's they right. shots to make us awake. <laughs> and look, you, you, you probably know you, you like it, all of us. We've got a lot of friends in the F&B industry, so... Um, if you can support them through the through the hours, it's great. We've, uh, there's lots of people out there doing some amazing things, not not just with their food, but there's some great places that are doing some takeaway cocktails yeah. and things. Mm-hmm. So Shady, I think Otto Amizo, Diplomats, even, Diplomats, Diplomats, Diplomats yeah, doing yeah. some great stuff in there as well. There's there's lots of really good things out there, so make sure you tap in and, and uh, support everyone while we can, and and then you can just enjoy them at home. Yeah. All right. Okay. See you Cheers. guys soon. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. See you later. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, oh, oh wine. Uh, yeah, 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 fill it up. We've got plenty of wine here. Yeah. Too <laughs> <laughs> so much. Cheers. Oh, cheers. cheers. Oh, and Kate and Tim, if you're listening, uh, let me know which wine you'd like me to bring to dinner tonight. <laughs> 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 cheers. Bye.